the predictions are very crazy, but they are not insane anymore because we mm. see what Corona and COVID did. Exactly. Everything can happen. Maybe yeah. this year, 2021, maybe there will be news where aliens come to Earth. Who knows what they will show. These days, nothing is impossible anymore. Is your crypto working for you? It can be with yield farming. But what are the risks? Hacking, volatility, poor smart contracts, scams. Even if you overcome the risks, there are still limitations. Do you have a million dollars to invest? Yield farming is a very complex, time-consuming, and expensive process. Can you imagine that not only you need to possess advanced skills to mitigate your risk and check smart contracts, but also you need to quit your job? In order to get the highest return, you need to manage thousands of platforms and check protocols around the clock. Well, not anymore. We're proud to announce the SwissBorg Smart Yield account. It's now possible for anyone to earn yield on most of your cryptos, such as USDC, Bitcoin, Ether, BNB, and only starting with 10 euros, the tap of your finger. So how does it work? It's simple. On a daily basis, Oracle scans and monitors all the different investment opportunities and delivers for you the best investment returns. So how is that more secure? Not only do we assess the best risk reward ratio, but also your assets are protected by our MPC technology and our safety net program. And how it does deliver return? Well, because our system is scanning the market every single day, you get the optimal return on that day. How do you get started? It's easy in three different steps. The first one, you deposit. The second one, you start the yield program. And the third one, you start relaxing, enjoying your passive income. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the Smart Yields, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we're here a special series Dubai edition crypto millionaires with tons of useful information, the mindset, the success, the failures, personal stories, but also lots of crypto geekiness just for you. And without further ado, a big shout out and hello to my dear friend, Matias. Thank you so much for coming on the show, my friend. Thank you so much to coming to Dubai to spend time with us to do great things to show your cool stuff here for the people it's very nice to meet you today thanks to you my friend thanks to you and one of the reasons why i really wanted to meet you matthias is a lot of people i i know here in crypto talk highly of you so you know carl the moon chris on crypto they all said you know matthias is the guy to meet and I'd love to hear your story, you know, a little bit about Matthias Mendy. I see you on Twitter. You're quite active on Twitter. But uh, who are you? Can you t tell people like a little bit about yourself and how you've managed to reach this, this status, you know, of, of success, as many people say you're a successful guy? Well, firstly, thank you. Shout out for Carl Moon and Chris MM Crypto and all of them. They are really good friends and brothers. And they all came here also. And they all opened business here now. And they all, this is now their new base. So it's a great thing. A great so to tell you more about my story, I came here in 2007 because I've been a born entrepreneur. So I was already making money with the age of nine. I was selling Kinder surprise figures no. and UCLO pages. Then I buy from the kids with the bicycle. I drive there, I buy very cheap. Then on the jumble sale, I sell expensive no. for the collectors <laughs> on a the carpet. There was no eBay at this time. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On a carpet. Yeah, on a carpet because oh it's like on the weekly, every two weeks, there's some other markets like the supermarkets. They yeah. have a big parking and people meet and they sell used stuff like old items, nostalgic items, whatever. And we were selling these figures. So it was already like a 4x to 20x return. So it was good. And I only did it because my friend's older brother, he did it. And I saw it and I saw the opportunity. And I was a gamer. I played too much Nintendo, Super Nintendo. <laughs> and these games, they cost money, you know? So I had to buy them. And then I need money. My parents will not support me. We are also 
actually an immigrant family which came actually from Poland, even though we have German roots from the past because we have German passport. So we didn't, like my, my parents, they work in the wine mountains to collect these grapes and stuff. So the first two years, so, so, I, so I think I had this spirit inside me somehow. That's incredible. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because when I was uh, a kid with my little brother, we would go to a wholesaler and we'd buy stickers, stickers. And then we would open up the packs of, you know, stickers and we'd go door to door and sell it at a higher ah. price as well. It's yeah, <laughs> a little smart hustle, yes. <laughs> but you know, I must say I also was one of the first people in the world who sold digital items. So I used to play this game called Diablo 2. Oh yeah, I remember that and game. Yeah, yeah. I used to be really good in acquiring items there. And then I would sell them on eBay. I was 16 or something, this like 20 years ago. But in this time I didn't have the, this Dubai mindset, the way of thinking bigger is better, the biggest and scaling. I did not scale, you see. After this game, I went into clothes fashion business. I buy, bought like hip hop chains, this no. Durex, what? <laughs> the rappers were and I was oh, selling them also. I also really? made 10x profit because in this time like the music came out and people they really, you know, they there was no equipment. Even Americans they would buy from me from the airbase. Can you believe that? Yeah. Because I had different color combinations. eBay was not so popular at this time. Incredible. And this was a mistake because I end Diablo because the inflation happened. Mm. And the inflation, it happened because people managed to copy the items. So the price went down and then I thought, okay, I will not play anymore. I need other business. But if I would have continued with World of Warcraft, oh, because yes. this is what my very good buddy Brock Pierce did. Yeah. He did World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft and yeah. he was so smart, he created a platform just so simple website and then he like had an this exchange, right? like, an exchange, like an exchange and he had people playing yeah, yeah, in yeah. China and other poor countries and they just collect gold yeah. they will sell him 1000 gold for one dollar and he will resell it to the world for ten dollars yeah. so it's 10x profit and because of the platform it's genius but you see this kind of things when you are a kid and young you don't know them you know yeah. When you come from a place where there are no entrepreneurs, where only people they want to make a Ausbildung, this is like a three years before you start the professional work after school, and then they compete to get a higher salary yeah. because now they work in a factory where they make maybe 2,500 euro net instead of 1,300 euro. For, for them, for my friends, some of them, this was the jackpot. Yeah. But for me, it would never be possible. I would, I always need to. You know, I feel when you figure out how to think. Yeah, I don't yeah. say I'm not the smartest guy. I make too many mistakes. I lost two times everything in Dubai. Till really? zero. Yeah, I had a lot of pain. Zero? Zero, zero. Like zero, full zero. I lived in a mate room once for almost one and a half. Yeah, I had to, no. you know, it was catastrophic. In, in a mate room? Yeah, in a small mate room. It was so small, like maybe eight square meters. No, like let's say 10 square meters maximum. Oh my God, and you're a tall guy. <laughs> yeah, like there was place for mattress, a table. It was because I didn't have money. This was like around 2011, 2012. I got hit really hard over here. I still was living the life because I have a lot of amazing and wealthy friends and they don't care about these things, but they're also not charity organizations, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so sometimes you also want to make your own money, but I always been good in meeting nice people, connecting, building connecting, relationships. Yeah. And and this also made me stronger for the future because now yeah. if there is a problem or something to solve, I will know who to talk to, yeah. who can help. I also have a lot of very nice Emirati friends which even visit me back in Germany back in the day. They stay in my home. My mother was cooking food for them. It was really, really cool times. Yeah, there's so much videos and pictures, yeah. And so like, like what were the, obviously the fact that you failed, like you said multiple times, makes me want to ask you about your success because I think through failure, we learn better life lessons than by succeeding sometimes, right? Like what are like two or three of the best lessons you've learned to become the Matthias Mendes of today? For sure, even if you make business with your friends, your close friends, when the business is about to happen or happens, 
You must do contracts. You must secure yourself. A handshake and a word is not good enough. Not good enough yeah. Even it's your brother. These days it's like this because sometimes they can random influences occur and things just changing and that's yeah. very sad, you know. And you know, then I had sometimes to bite in the bitter apple and yeah. take the pain. But the thing is, it's a good lesson. I think this brought me also to some situations and some things where I'm, I became digital after things. I mean, I was always on Facebook since 2007 and I always edited my pictures with Adobe Photoshop. Oh, cool. But then when Instagram came out with the filter, such a simple idea, but it's genius. Everybody yeah. loves it. And then with Instagram, I start making money again. I was running bots which grew accounts, but real followers targeted by interest. So everything was working. Then I grow many places here. I met a lot of people from the industry and I've been scaling this business. And then in 2016, I got into crypto. Uh, I did not only the bots, I did also branding, a lot of things, you know, but if I do it, it's properly done. Like German quality German standard, quality. <laughs> very important. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because we need to be on time, you know, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. important. It's very important. And that's speaking of which, stay tuned for part two. We talked about Matthias, the background, why Dubai could be a crypto capital and a great fit for many crypto people. And of course the story and many cool things. But next up, we're gonna transition to Bitcoin and crypto. So stay tuned guys, part two. Without further ado, my next question, Matthias, we were talking about Bitcoin versus altcoins. You're not necessarily a Bitcoin maxi, but tell us a little bit about how you see the crypto space at the moment. What excites you the most? There are so, so many exciting projects. Personally, I love Bitcoin. I'm, Bitcoin is amazing. Decentralization is amazing. I believe it's changing the world and it will change the world even more. What excites me the most? I would say DeFi, DeFi. decentralized finance. I love many projects and uh, I mean, there's so many great projects. There's so, so many. So which one like to start with? Yeah, that's a great question. I would love to ask you like among the DeFi, I guess like different asset classes, we have yielding, we have, uh, we have NFTs, we have all kinds of cool platforms we have decentralized exchanges, automated market makers. What are some of the DeFi projects that you absolutely love at the moment and tell us why? I personally love the yield farmings because they pay so much return and it's very safe for, I believe it's safe for anybody to use them. It's just still a bit complicated. I like Aave very much. I like cream. I even like sushi. But personally, I like also decentralized exchange, exchanges. And one of the, my favorite ones, I mean, the only one, I, it's not the only, but it's the fastest one. It's actually Serum. serum. Did you hear about uh, Serum? Yeah, you told me a little bit about it earlier. Please yeah, let me know. So yeah. Serum, it's based on the Solana blockchain and the whole Serum DEX is on chain. So it's like super fast. And the nice thing what they created, these are the Alameda guys also from FTX. So that what they created is that this serum code, it's available to be copied and they made something that they want people, they encourage actually people to create multiple DEXs mm -hmm. and all those DEXs, they will have the liquidity from the main serum, which is like a kind of pool where all the liquidities are together. So if somebody now creates a Indian decentralized exchange, let's say Bollywood DEX, Dot com. Now he makes some Bollywood Deem and so on, but it could the graphic user interface, but in the background it's Serum running. Uh, and and they get, the, the people who made the exchange, they get rewarded. They get 20% of all the transactions. transactions. And they called it Eco Serum, this thing which rewards. Because at the end, if this grows, then the normal exchanges are not necessary needed so much because remember because you know that in the world there are a lot of unbanked people also and the exchange is like for them also kind of a bank actually not the exchange the wallet Wallets, yeah. and there they can just trade and they don't need to do all this big KYC and AML they can just do it I mean it's can it's also a bit risky for some other cases but in general for humanity I think it's a good thing yeah. and it excites me 
Definitely, that excites me as well because it reminds me a little bit of the challenger banks, you know, like Revolut, Monzo, where they have a front end mainly, but they don't really own the back end. They use banking solutions and technology to, to offer a better experience, right? right? And like you said, it could be India, it could be any language creates their interface, but they all have connectivity to that exactly. decentralized exchange. That's really cool. And at the end, it just needs marketing and user acquisition yeah. to make them grow more. But I believe in the long run it will all happen and these technologies and they will just keep improving and, and the teams which work on them, they also bringing updates like on monthly basis. So it's really great and you know like now Cream is bringing out the Iron Bank. I don't know if you hear about it, but no. this is something amazing. It's like Cream 2.0. So I cannot exactly explain how it works. It's a bit technical but they will combine the liquidity from sushi and yield, like Yearn Finance and Cream. And I think Avi, I'm not sure, but they are combined like friends because through the blockchain, all these lendings and borrowing, there's some kind of formulas. And these formulas, they will let normal people benefit who just have money sitting around, who have it in the bank, but then they don't need it in the bank anymore. They just need it on a wallet and then they just lock it up and then they generate maybe 5 to 25 percent return dividends yield per year so there are so many great ways i i believe that this is very nice that sounds amazing are there any other projects where you're super bullish on so you mentioned of course serum you mentioned just now uh, another project are there any other DeFi projects where you you feel like okay this is really exciting as well i believe I mean, DeFi projects, I would say... Or, to or tokens in general tokens. is fine, yeah. I, I think uh, Polkadot is a very good blockchain and all the Polka projects, they are very interesting. Gavin Woods, he's a genius. Oh, there, there, there are too many, you know. There are I, too many. <laughs> there, 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 there are just so many, but many, even yeah. this layer level two, layer two protocols for Ethereum, they are also good because they make things more fast and uh, synthetics is very interesting. I mean, there's really a lot of stuff, you know, like a lot of this, 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 tech, this tokens, they are still improving. They are still rolling out. And I think also the big future is in wallets to make them more easy and user friendly. And I think that's also a big thing. And exchanges also because people they moving more and more to crypto yeah. even the people who never dealt with it they are moving to it and that's interesting that's because really interesting. this makes this industry bigger and i believe that there will be more financial freedom and also there are already businesses which have this pos systems yeah. where people can pay so shortly i believe more and more will accept crypto there's so many good points that you mentioned. And you know, when you talked about not just the coins and tokens, the DeFi projects, exchanges for mass adoption, being able to use crypto as a payment form. There's so many things that, you know, we, we're looking forward to in, in the near future in that sense. And I'd love to ask you, like, because you, every single coin or token that you mentioned has real economics. Do yes. you feel like compared back in the day, like these days, some of these tokens now have real value rather than just speculation? Or do you feel like, you know, there's, there's, there's a real crypto economy building these days? Ab absolutely, I think that because there's a real use case happening. I mean, when you, for example, it's very simple. Let's make one sample. We have a user, then we have the user who has a wallet with crypto. Then he moves the, wall, the, the crypto, he locks it for borrowing. So he allows people to borrow money. So he's the lender from him. Now, if somebody lends this money from him, but on the blockchain, this person suddenly gets 20% dividends. So that's the profit. And the person who, lent, who borrowed it, also he borrows often on margin, which means that if he trades with it or he uses it for trading, for example, and let's say he borrowed on a 5x margin, that if the position closes 20%, then his collateral will disappear. disappear yeah. And the person who borrowed, lent, sorry, the person who lent the money will get his money back. And 
everybody is happy in the system. So, the, so this are actually the, the old financial system. There was not such possibilities because people can just take the money out of the account or something can happen. But now in, with the blockchain combined, this cannot happen it's anymore. Like so it's a whole new world and it's still the beginning. It's not too late. It's just starting and it's going to be so, so interesting. I feel like we're so spoiled and lucky to live these times yes. where we see this evolution happening. Because like you said, 2017 was very speculative. There are a lot of projects with no substance and no yes. economics and stuff like that. So and, and also one more point, the real companies, they mm -hmm. also can they tokenize a share of their business and then they kind of create a security token. I believe security tokens still will be a big thing. Because now imagine if Apple, who makes so much profit, they will tokenize just one person of their company and sell it in 100 million units. So there will be 100 million shareholders of this one person. And then all these people, they will get a dividend based on their percentage from the profit from Apple. So this is also amazing. And I believe many, many companies, they will start doing it. And there's more tokenization platforms happening but most important is the laws and regulations of the country. Here in Dubai, thanks God, we have a great regulation structure and it's happening more. And uh, I'm also working in the Dubai Blockchain Center and we are responsible for education. And we also work with law office, which help to draw these regulations. And crypto is not illegal anymore, for sure. And there will be few entities which will be probably the fastest to proper support it. It's amazing, yeah. Matthias. I hear you're doing such great things here, and I'm glad that you're pushing innovation, right? Which you've always done and, and been uh, been really involved with. I want to ask you a quick question based sure. on yield farming in the beginning. So you're talking about yielding and yield farming, and you just mentioned trading a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of of a ratio, like based on your success in the past, like how much of your crypto is working for you like just roughly in percentage wise like how much do you like to have in terms of yielding what is the percentage you put into trading hodling like how do you like manage your portfolio these days and what are some tips that you could share to everyone out there watching okay <laughs> so guys okay i will share it but i i hope nobody will copy this exactly the yes, way how i do it because exactly. i operate maybe on a more risky level yeah in this yielding i do when I see very good APYs, when there are good returns. So for me, when it's like above 100% or 200%, then I go in for the period. Trading, so this means that I might take 80% of my money, of my net worth and put it into this. I always go very hard in these things because I believe they work and they work. And it just brings more money because it's for a short period. When I trade, I also use nearly most of my money. I will not open one trade with like 100%, but if I know that something, I can get a pre-sale or a token very low, I will try to maximize buy it, mm -hmm. depending on the lockup periods. But if this happens, I know also that I get 500%, 1000% or 300% return really quick. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a no-brainer for it's me. And especially if they are realistic projects, like now you had this Maps IEO happening, Maps.me, where they integrate a wallet based on the Serum ecosystem. Also the Solana FTX guys did it. And this Maps wallet, it had already, sorry, the Maps app, it had already 120 million users before that. So now there's just so many new users for the ecosystem. So obviously all the tokens and projects which are integrated in this, obviously they will grow. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so this is the future of crypto and I believe a lot of apps and a lot of amazing tools which we use from the app store, they will in the future also have some token options or some coins which are on a blockchain somehow or they give you some kind of rewards which can be exchanged somewhere for money. Everything is happening as we speak and I believe there are just unlimited options and I believe that many people have these ideas 
And I also believe that the first people who solidly execute those ideas, they will succeed. So you just mentioned lots of very useful tips. Number one, understanding one's risk tolerance, which is very good for all those out there. That's a very thing, very important thing to know, right? Really how risk averse or how risk taking am I? Uh, but you also mentioned one a ratio of your, your portfolio going into yielding and yield farming, playing with some of the big yield farms with, with triple digit APY. And then on top of that, something really interesting, how you're talking about allocating funds to new projects, new tokens. And you specifically mentioned a token that had adoption already or had usage or the network effect. Are there any other things when you're looking for that micro cap token, right? Where you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna gamble a little bit. I wanna gamble on this token because I think it could do 100X. What are some things that you try to look at uh, before deciding to uh, participate in an early token sale or, or a micro cap token? Well, there's so many things to explain, but I would say that in the future, I believe that companies which don't have a token use case, they will create tokens. So the company already have a track record before that. Mm -hmm. So if it's a great company which is making profits and they invent a functional token which makes sense, then surely this will be a good token if the tokenomics are good, if the, you know, the, some good investors are behind it. And usually, in general, in all the projects, even in new projects, you usually I believe it's very good to see who's backing the projects, which kind of investment funds or crypto funds are behind it, which creators are involved. And there are a lot of people who have a good reputation because it's not like before in 2017 where things only get invented because there was no history before these yeah. projects. But now there's history. So you have some players with good names, good reputations. But then you have another problem. The very good projects to get the allocation, especially for the big amounts, like let's say five, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, very hard. These private sales are very limited. Sometimes you have to know somebody in the project and they sell out. Also those allocations, they are locked sometimes, which means when the token lists, you cannot spend it. You cannot cash it out like immediately when the token launch. But when you buy the IEOs and on Binance or on FTX, for example, those IEOs also very quickly, like they sell out. I was bidding on one IEO yesterday. I had the maximum amount of tickets and I still did not even won one. But everybody knows that these tokens, when they come out, they are directly 5x, 7x, 10x. And for the pre-sale, it would be $100,000. So it was a lot and seven year lockup period. And I didn't want to wait one year till I can cash it out. But in the one year, of course, the price probably in two weeks is already seven times X. So which means that after one year, I already have my money out. And then over the seven years monthly, I'll get a portion which I can cash out or I can keep it and it grows more. So it's a very good investment. But for me, I need my capital now because also Bitcoin might go to 100, 150 K. So if it hits now some low ground, then shortly I will buy also a few Bitcoins because the predictions are very crazy and I, they, are, they, are, they are insane, but they are not insane anymore because we mm. see what Corona and COVID did. So nothing is insane anymore. <laughs> exactly. Everything can happen. Maybe yeah, this yeah. year, 2021, maybe there will be news where aliens come to Earth. Who knows what they will show us and the people in the news. So there is so much manipulation also happening. So. Everything is possible. These days, nothing is impossible anymore. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. And there's so many like hidden gems that you just mentioned there. I think the, the backing you talked about, not just the team, but the people investing, the, the hedge funds, maybe the hedge VC fund. companies Absolutely. that are behind it. If it's, you know, one big name like Peter Thiel, you know, or anyone yeah. like that. Backing. Andresen, Horowitz, Alameda, all these groups. Yeah, is it is it because they, they're kind of like they do lots of due diligence and they do all the work that makes you have to do less work. And why do you like the backing part so much? Because these are very smart companies. They are in this field, so they already understand everything and they do a very good due diligence and they, they already have money. These people, they are not in the game to accumulate more wealth. 
they make more wealth. Of course, they want to make money, but they accumulate to promote good things and grow the ecosystem and help other people to participate in it and not get scammed because yeah. in the blockchain world, there are too many, scams. Yeah, too many scams. I have a company, it's called digitalwalletrecovery.com. I'm getting so many requests from people who get scammed to get their money back because I'm working with a cracker, he can open wallets when people forgot their password. Because I need an idea of a password. Maybe instead an I, it's a question mark, as said an S is a question mark, maybe in a dollar sign. So based on this, we create hundreds of millions of combination and we manage to open, but I cannot just open any wallet like this. But really, 49 of 50 requests are scam. Like people who've been scammed because they put in some dashboard money, then they have to put 0.1 BTC to unlock their money. You know, they get yeah, multiple, multiple. multiple times scammed in one scam. It's yeah, so sad. It's so sad. It's so and sad. this makes them look bad in the industry, but that's not a bad industry. It's a good industry. Just some people, some parasite people, they, they poisoned it. And this needs to change. It's very important. Yeah, and I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that, you know, these people, like you said, they, they really, they're professionals, they have great expertise, the backing is very important, and also they help avoid scams, like you said, right? So when it's backed, it gives that stamp of, you know, trust or confidence. confidence. And I agree with you 100%. That's one of the key factors when I'm looking into a micro cap, who's, who's actually backing it, not just the influencers, but which VC fund, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one thing that you talked about, uh, which, you know, since you're with the Dubai Blockchain Center, there's something yes. you mentioned about getting celebrities involved in, in blockchain as well. Yeah. Do you mind sharing just a few ideas on how you see that playing out or some idea? Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Well, that's basically, this is one of the my personal projects which I've been preparing since a while. And basically what I want to create is a token where influencers can have their tokens. I know there are tokens like this already existing, but in mine specifically, it will be a use case. Something like OnlyFans, but the, without any porn, of course. <laughs> but, uh, but the content which the celebrity will show, only people who own the token will see. And they will get also some more functions, some governance that the fans, they can do votings for the celebrity. There was recently such a project they call it Chili's Exchange or yeah, something, and yeah. they launched all the soccer tokens. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. something similar like that, just a little bit different. And I believe it's good for the fans, and a lot of new people will come to the ecosystem. Just the only big problem we have, the mass adoption. Yeah. Because to install a MetaMask wallet is too complicated. To install all these things is too hard. It's people too hard, yeah. have to have it Instagram easy, click, click, yeah, click. Click, click, click. So how we will do it? Through Telegram with Telegram channels, with bots, which confirm that the token is, that's very interesting. I think in two to three months, I will announce it. That's fantastic. It's a very fresh angle because, you know, we talk about hedge funds, institutions, we talk about corporate treasury, government treasury to create mass adoption, but celebrities are definitely a fast track to the mass adoption as well, right? Actors, actresses, singers, right? They will help. Even the singers, if they have now one singer, let's say they are only limited 100,000 tokens. tokens yeah. So there can be only 100,000 top fans in this group. And if they have a governance functions that they can vote, then imagine yeah, the celebrity cool. just, oh he will sing a song he's bought for his fans and his fans, they might say, wow, this is amazing. One to 10, I like this like this, so they get also inspired because maybe the fans, they have a good idea about the artist and they really love him and they want the best for him and they just express their, their, their like for their music. Absolutely, like a believer, Justin Bieber coin or something like that. The fans would die for that coin. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That's possible. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Matthias, for your time today. We talked about so many interesting topics, such as you know your background about Dubai, the vision, the future of technology and blockchain in this hopefully future capital, uh, but also Bitcoin, about altcoins, yield farming, DeFi. We talked about so many interesting things, and I really want to thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show. Oh, it was great having you. Thank you. So if much, we want to follow brother. you, you're on at at Sheikh Mendy. Mendy. Because at Mendy is taken, I want to get it, but my official one is at Mendy. M-E-N-D-E.
Fantastic. Don't forget to follow Matias on Instagram and Twitter. He's a great guy, a very kind guy in helping the space, helping the crypto economy grow here in Dubai. And of course, join us every Wednesday premiering at PC Near You, 8 o'clock GMT. See you next week, guys.